Today we're converting this camper's electrical system from lead acid batteries to lithium iron phosphate batteries. Our new electrical system will have shore power charging, alternator charging, and solar power charging, all optimized for our lithium iron phosphate batteries. We've got a bunch of high quality components here and we're gonna show you step by step how we installed these into the camper to convert the entire system to a lithium iron phosphate battery system. We'll include a complete list of parts we use today with affiliate links to all of them in the description below with a complete cost breakdown of the entire project. Today on cameras, we got Roger helping us out. Thanks, Raj. Hello, everyone. At the center of our camper's electrical system is gonna be power storage. For that, we're using two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that Dr. Prepare sent us. We'll put an affiliate link in the description below if you'd like to try them out with us. Be sure to use this coupon code to save yourself some money. Let's get these batteries out of the box. You may be wondering why you should switch to lithium. First of all, you get 100% discharge with the lithium iron phosphate batteries versus 50% at best with the lead acid batteries. You also get a longer lifespan with these. These are rated for 3000 cycles, which is significantly longer than a lead acid battery and the weight savings. We're gonna be putting these in the pass-through and we're gonna show you how we mount those in there. So we're gonna be removing weight from the tongue of the trailer as well. These weigh about 22 pounds a piece versus a lead acid that comes in anywhere between 40 and 60 pounds. Good gravy. So if you have multiple batteries, it really adds up on your weight. And now it's time for our safety break. Danger. We're gonna be dealing with electricity today and always use an abundance of caution when you're dealing with electricity. This is just a 12 volt system, but if you have any concerns, please refer to a qualified electrician for your project. The first part of today's build is going to be to install the batteries in the pass-through. For that, I've made this wooden tray. This wooden tray, we're gonna to mount to the floor. Two batteries will go side by side and then we can strap them right down to the floor. After we get the batteries installed, we'll hook up the alternator charging, the solar power charging, and the shore power charging. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our battery tray hold down installed, and we're just gonna use these one inch drywall screws to attach it to the floor. So I've made this tray so it'll hold two batteries. These are pretty light, really. And then I'm gonna use some of the packing foam as a little buffer in between. Nice. And then we have a ratchet strap that's gonna hold the whole thing together. We're gonna go ahead and we've marked our hole here. We're gonna drill this out for a one inch hole so we can run our battery cables through it. Oh, there's a hole. We're gonna get ready to work on the system here. So we're gonna disconnect the batteries and make sure that our shore power is unplugged as well because the converter can back feed into the electrical system. So now we're just confirming pinouts for the trailer pen cable. And this is gonna be our alternator feed coming from our tow vehicle. And we're making sure that we have the correct wire in this box. And we've confirmed that this is the wire we need. We're gonna run this into our Renogy DC to DC charge regulator because it has an alternator input. We've got our positive and negative feeds coming through our hole. And Fred Jr's down there. He's getting ready to hook them up underneath. We're gonna use the same spot that the original batteries were hooked up to so we don't have to redo a bunch of wiring. But our positive is gonna jump on here just like it did with the factory battery. So it retains everything else that we need it to. And we've also got our new ground wire that we have self-tapped over here. And it's going right to the right frame. Right to the frame. And that is hot on there. And that's our new positive and negative connections. And that's our alternator line that we have running up there. These are the only three connections that we actually had to make into the camper to run our new lithium iron phosphate batteries. And then to go up through the camper, we just made a small hole in here and we'll fill that in just like they did with this with some expanda foam to seal it up and that'll take care of that. So for wiring our control panel and wiring into the camper, we use this number four gauge welding cable, which is a fairly high quality cable. It's all copper and it's easy flex too. So we ran 10 gauge for our inputs for the Renogy unit. It's a 10 gauge wire from the alternator that we have on here. And we've also ran 10 gauge for the solar input plug. He's gonna get that all buttoned up and then we're gonna move on to getting our control panel set up for our battery storage system. 
All right, this is what we've come up with for our control panel. This is gonna hold all the components for the entire system all on one board. So for our control panel board, we've used the same four gauge wiring and these will hook directly to our battery. And we also have a direct shutoff switch. So everything on there comes on and off with that. So that'll replace the master switch in the camper. But that powers our two bus bars, which also controls our DC to DC charger. And the Renogy also came with a very nice fuse for the output side of the Renogy unit as well for the charging side. We've got the same four gauge wire that we ran to an oversized circuit breaker. That way when we do upgrade in the future our inverter, it'll be already sized appropriately. But this 300 watt pure sine wave inverter will power sensitive electronics and hopefully a Starlink unit for us. To make up our battery terminal ends here for these lugs, we're going to show you what we use to make these. To put our lugs on our four gauge wire, we use this hammer crimper that we picked up on Amazon. Let me show you how it works. I'm just going to put my shrink wrap on the wire, put my lug on the end, and then I'm going to use this spring loaded guy and put him right on the top. And we found that two good wax is really all you need. So this is how we put all the ends on our four gauge wire for this whole system. So here's a close up of our entire control panel. Go ahead and hit pause if you need to, to see exactly where we put all the wires. Let's get this control panel hooked up in the pass through. That's what we're going for. Yeah, I like that. Next, let's get our batteries installed. Those ain't going nowhere. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our batteries all wired up here. We've got our negative hooked up here and we're gonna go negative to negative and positive to positive and that's gonna give us our 12 volt system. So we've got our power here and let's get our last connection made. So we have our positive on one battery and our negative on another battery for the inputs on these. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's the way we did it. Leave us a comment below and tell us what you think. We're gonna go ahead and hook the camper leads up to our bus bars. Got our two connections made to the camper, but also when you're doing this, make sure that you've got your master power off. That way nothing arcs. Alternator charging. So that's our next step on here. And we have our alternator wire. We're just gonna kind of snake it up through here a little bit. And I love that they give you the oversized terminals on this Renogy unit too. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook up the wire for our solar charging. And this just goes to the Furion two pin that's outside of the camper. We're gonna put our negative terminal on here for our solar panel and it's just gonna go to our bus bar. That's all snug down. And for shore power charging, we have this unit from Repro. It has the higher voltage, so it'll work with the lithium batteries versus the one that comes in the camper for the lead acid, because the lithium batteries require a higher float voltage. Let's get this thing installed. Here's what came in the box. It's a little bit bigger than the factory one, but the footprint is the same size, so it should just slide right in here, and it looks like it's a nice laid out unit from RecPro. So let's go ahead and get the old one out of here. And make sure before you start anything with your electronics inside that you have your shore power disconnected and you have your battery disconnected. Let's test fit this thing in here. It's so close. So rather than cut the tabs off of a brand new unit, we're gonna cut two relief slots in the back of this plastic. 
fun to begin this. Oh, actually, that's not too bad to get to. We did have to cut out the back of this, but it's not something that everybody's gonna see, so we weren't too concerned with it, and it's not really structural. And now our new Rec Pro unit fits. All right, let's go ahead and get this Rec Pro unit wired in. This thing does have a plug, but we're gonna go ahead and cut that off and hardwire it in. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our AC power hooked up to this. We're gonna tie our ground in. Let's go ahead and get our common tied in. And now let's get our breaker wired back in. Those ain't going nowhere. We've got our Rec Pro unit wired in. Go ahead and put the cover back on here and power it up. We've got all of our wiring secured and cleaned up. Let's turn the system on and see what happens. Just kidding. Let's go ahead and go inside the camper and make sure that the power is getting in there and everything works. Let's test the slide out. Looks like we got power. Now that we have our shore power hooked up, let's go ahead and test our Rec Pro unit. So it's putting out about 17 amps. This is a four stage charger, so that should be about right. The shore power charging is all hooked up and working. Let's test the alternator charging. To test the alternator charging, we've hooked up a truck. Let's see if it's working. So the red indicator light indicates that the vehicle is charging the system. Looks like we're charging right around six amps. To test the solar charging, I've got the 100 watt suitcase panel deployed. Let's see if we've got a red light. All right, that red light in there means that the solar charging is now working. For $16, we added this little battery monitor. This little guy's pretty cool. It shows state of charge, our voltage, and it even has a little thermometer. We're gonna run some wires and fish this up into the camper eventually, but we wanted to show you. Let's go over the cost breakdown for this project. For power storage, we have two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. At the time I'm making this video, you can buy those for $205 a piece on Amazon. Then we have our Renogy 50 amp MPPT power controller, $270. Our Rec Pro converter charger cost us $125 and our number four welding cable came out to $73 for 25 feet. Then we have number 10 gauge copper wire, 25 feet, $23. Number four gauge ring terminals, $12. Our bus bars, $28. Shut off switch, $13. And our 40 amp breaker came in at $16. Total cost for the project, $970. We stayed under our $1,000 limit. We're excited to try out these lithium iron phosphate batteries. And even though Dr. Prepare did send us those batteries, this is not a sponsored video. If you liked today's video, or if there's anything you would have done differently, drop us a comment below and let us know. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.